So in the Torah portion, we continue with Isaac, Yitzchak, digging wells, digging tunnels. And those wells, those well springs, he finds water that gives life. And Avimelech and his people are stuffing up his wells. They're stuffing up the source of water. Now, they feel justified because, you know, if we have an open well, it might uh, invite people that we don't want here because they're going to see the source of um, of, uh, of water, of life. It could bring armies that just even passing through, you know, will partake in this. And he doesn't want it. But yet, he stuffs up something that's not his, that belonged to Abraham, and now to Yitzhak, to Isaac, and Isaac says, you're, obviously, if you're doing something like that, you're not a friend, you hate me. I said, well, no, I see that you're a man of God, so, you know, make a covenant with me. He recognizes that God's with him, so therefore, he wants to make a covenant. So should it be that everybody recognizes that the descendants of Yitzchak, of Isaac, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that people recognize that the blessing is with us and that God is with us, and therefore they want to make a covenant. So there are people in the world today that recognize it, few and far between, and there are many of those that don't, like those who are real enemies. Who are out to destroy all that is good and holy. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine, coming to you for Chabad Zuch and Kedeshim in Montreal, Canada, where it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the time now. We begin today the fourth essay. And in his fourth essay, we quote from the pre Chaim that says that the main refinement, the main digging we do today, what happens when you dig? You find stuff underground. You find gold, silver. You find emeralds jewels, amazing thing. They're full of dirt. So you need to refine and refine it. This is what's called the Avedal Habirurim of refinement. So where is the refinement today when you dig? Where are you going to make it? Where are you going to find? Well, what are you going to find? What are you refining? So the Priya Chaim says that the refinement, which by the way, why is there such amazing treasures under the earth? Is because spiritually, the sparks of God are hidden through the Shvidas um, the the breaking of the vessels, that happened in the spiritual world of Tohu. And in that spiritual world of Tohu, now we need to find that spiritual stuff that's dug deep down. Right? As Isaac digs wells to find life, water. So that's our job, to dig deep, to find spiritual life. So where are we doing that? So... 
it's a primarily affected through prayer, davening. Even though Torah study is superior to prayer, as Torah study is an equivalent to all of the commandments. Yep, we're studying Torah right now. And what we're doing is an equivalent to all of the commandments. Yet, the main refinement that takes place, finding the gems, the emeralds, deep down in the earth, deep down to find the spark of God that we need to refine, it's going to be mainly accomplished in this present era through prayer. And the explanation is as, is as follows. Torah mitzvahs, there's a light that's drawn down from the Ein Soif, from the Ein Soif of God, the Or Ein Soif, the limitless light of God. And Torah's study draws additional light into the divine intellect in the world of Atzilus. Mitzvahs also brings through its observance an additional light into the world of Atzilus, into the six emotions of Atzilus. That's every time we're studying Torah right now. We're drawing additional spiritual light of the Ein Soif, of the limitlessness of, of God's light and drawing it down into divine intellect. If we were giving charity, putting on tefillin, physical act of a mitzvah, so we'd be drawing that additional light into the divine emotions. Now, later, they clothe themselves in a diminished intensity, this light of God, right? In the world of Bria, Tzir, and Asiya, the three worlds, and in this physical world, in the Torah and the mitzvahs. Now, what does it mean that it's enclosed in this world? It's enclosed in the mitzvah element that we do, right? Like the tefillin or the Lulav and Esri on the holiday of Sukkot. So there is a light of God that's enclosed there. Prayer, on the other hand, calls forth also of an infinite light of God, right? The Ein Saif, and it brought, calls it forth into the world of Bria, it's in Asiya. But directly, it's not merely enclosed, but it's direct. Not just merely by an enclosement, right? which enclosement like clothes, you know, fit the person. They're, you know, measured to the person. Which means a contractional limitation to fit. But here, no, no, this is, this is, no, no, no. Um, that is still has a powerful force in it, this light, that what it can actually do is cure the ill. As we say, Rafa'enu Hashem, in the Amida, we say, God heal us, right? Or Baruch Aleinu, bring blessing by bringing rain to fall on earth, that uh, we will have fertile and yield much produce. And the, and the blessing of Birchas Hashanim. What does that do? It actually changes the physical reality of this world. Someone was previously sick, our prayers, bringing that light of God, as we said, the infinite light of God, the infinite light of God is has the capacity to come down into this world to heal, to give produce, to give livelihood, and that's actually changing something because previously a person wasn't well, physical reality, and now they're better. Previously it was a, you know, parched um, or a drought, and now through prayers, hey, it's raining. It's changing the reality that now things will, produce will yield. But that's not the case of Torah mitzvahs, right? There's no change in the physical reality of this world. In other words, when you're putting on tefillin, yes, the tefillin are holy, but that's a spiritual thing. 
It isn't when you make tefillin, the physical reality of this tefillin changed. The spiritual reality of the tefillin changed. It's imbued with holiness, so therefore we have to deal with it with holiness. But the physical uh, of it, the physical reality of it is, it's, hasn't changed. But someone who is sick, right? They had some, whatever it is. There's a physical change now. They're healed. There wasn't produce growing. Didn't have livelihood. There's a physical reality that changed. And that change also is interesting. This comes from God. As opposed to the tefillin, comes from our efforts. We have to make the tefillin, not only make the tefillin, but by the, we imbue the holiness in it. So the imbuing of the holiness in it by the fact that we put on the tefillin, for example, right? That's when it becomes holy in the act of doing the mitzvah. So we're imbuing it. Well, we're imbuing it in the spiritual quality of the tefillin. That's what we imbue. But not so when it comes to prayer, right? And that we bring healing to ourselves, to others in this world, or bring livelihood. Right? Well, who can make that change? Well, you know, that the physical reality should change. Well, God does it. Yes, we need to pray in order to elicit that new light that comes from the Ein Soif, from the limitlessness of God. Absolutely. No question. We've got to do it. But in the end, God's the one who brings the healing. He's the one who brings the livelihood. But that's not the case when it comes to Torah. In other words, by prayer, we're eliciting this reality of healing. Torah... We're not eliciting divine. I'm, we're not eliciting or creating something new through our efforts of study. Torah is one with God, whether we study it or not. It's His divine wisdom. It's one with the emanator. Right. So even though we're learning right now and we are roused to create that additional light of God to be brought into the spiritual worlds above. But it really remains in the spiritual realm. That being said, yes, it can have a ripple effect and bring you know, um, goodness to the person and to others, absolutely. But it's not inherently changing the physical reality in the act of the mitzvah. The act of prayer does, because that's the idea of prayer, is to connect to God, to bring healing and goodness in this world. So, through prayer, we, just to bring it out, this, again, it, it has to be, come from within, the depths of the heart, in other words, you're, when you're praying, you know, to change the reality of someone who's sick, you're, you know, can't be just, you're just saying words, and, you know, you're half focused, no, it means you're arousing something that is transcending this world, the infinite light of God, that it should actually change the reality in the physical reality of this world. Well, you need to mirror that huge um, huge um, I don't know what the word would be, not jump, but like a huge thing to, cre to create, you know, to, to actually your prayers are changing a reality that are listening God's light into this world and changing a reality over here. 
Now, again, we're, we're, we're intuitively more understanding that, you know, a spiritual reality, but a physical reality. So it has to come from a real place of depth within the person to touch the ver the place of depth of God, the Ain Saif, that you elicit the infinite state of the divine in order to um, to bring that divine light directly into this world to change a reality of someone who is ill and now cured. And because of this, our sages call divine worship prayer. They call it Tfila Chayesha. The prayer is life of the moment. Just like, uh, you know, living for the moment means like living in the here and now of the physical reality of what we're engaged in right now. So in that sense, that's what prayer is. It's about the here and now, in this moment. I'm, someone's not well, and you're praying for them. Or you might yourself might not be well, and you're praying. You're bringing life in the moment. As life is temporal, we feel that when we're not well. And we, hence we pray. As opposed to Torah study, it's called Chaya eternal life and eternal is more of the spirit of the person the soul of the individual because the effect that we're having is a soulful effect think about it we're learning right now tanya are we having a direct effect on the physical reality of our being? No. Are we having a profound soulful effect? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what Torah does. Right? And from there, of course, because it affects you soulfully, the ripple effect can be that can will affect you also physically. But it's only the ripple effect of it. It's not direct. It's not a direct thing. As opposed to prayer. Prayer, when it's done, the individual's full engagement, full engagement, So then that prayer directly brings Rafa'inu Hashem. Heal us, God. Baruch Alenu. Bless us, God. That from our deep, you know, concentration, deep sense of connection and, and feeling towards Hashem in our prayers elicits the infinite of God directly into this world. The changes of reality. And may all those soldiers, the IDF, all those that have been kidnapped, all those that need a healing, Hashem heal them. Pray for them. That's why when Jews gather, they need to pray. First and foremost, speeches, hmm, hmm, maybe learning Torah, of course, of course learning Torah, but speeches, no, prayer, and as Arizal says, that this is the main divine service in our day is prayer. That's very powerful. That's very powerful. Because through our prayer we can actually change the reality in this world. So the Jewish people need to come together in prayer, and everybody else is invited to, in order to keep our soldiers safe in order to keep 
the hostages alive and become freed from bondage, from slavery, even worse probably, and that uh, everybody should be well. Our prayers can change that reality. Our Torah study does it too, but not directly. Indirectly. That's the point here. Very powerful. Very empowering. Evita has a question. What happens when you pray for a foolish Shlema or Parnassa or others' prayers and your prayers are not answered? First of all, how do you know they're not answered? Maybe the answer is no. It's an answer. Not the answer you wanted. <laughs> of course. Right? get it but that's an answer sometimes that's first of all secondly maybe you were answered specifically what you requested is that possible It's just that we don't open our eyes and see. Again, maybe the specific thing we're asking. Maybe we're answered also in a different way than we expected it. That's going to bring bigger blessings that we had thought of, possibly. And then again, again, it might be just no. Or... Maybe it's what the other end is saying over here to create that change it has to be Behova Aidecha. Your prayer is with all your very with like the deepest part of inside of you and of you. I don't know if I do that myself really properly. Maybe here and there possibly. Even then. I'm not going to be um, so um, high-minded of myself to think that I'm really praying in such a way that God should respond to me in the way I expect or want it, want Him to respond. Maybe that's part of the issue. Anyway, just some thoughts. Just some thoughts. Great question, Davida. Thank you. All right. By the way, there's not just parenthetically, there's another element of prayer. The refinement isn't just in the physical world that we change a reality of someone who is not well and they are become healed or it needs livelihood and it's getting livelihood, but there's a refinement of ourselves within our heart till we become more refined more connected to Hashem to the divine shouldn't forget that all right beautiful thank you all I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you Chabad Zuch and Kedish in Montreal Canada it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you Italian have an amazing great day
round one coming up right now.